Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. With the latest update to Luminar AI, that is version 1.2, Skylum Software tweaked the sky filter a little bit. Now they of course added the ability to add a reflection in water of the replacement sky, but they also tweaked the sliders a little bit and changed things around. So in this video, I wanna go over all that so that you totally understand what all these sliders do in the sky filter of Luminar AI. I'm also going to show you how to install a set of third-party skies into Luminar AI. Recently, I was contacted by Rob Del Vecchio of OcuDrone.com. He asked me if I would take a look at his skies uh, that he sells on his website. And I really do like his skies and why I like them is that they're really unique from sky to sky. And what I mean by that is many of the sky packages I've seen for sale are padded, meaning they may say they have, let's say, 200 skies, but 10 skies are really the same sky shot at a slightly different focal length, or maybe they just framed it up a little bit differently, but it's really the same sky. These skies are really unique from sky to sky. In the description below this video, I have a link to Rob's website. You could check them out for yourself. Now, he's not paying me to do this video, nor will I make any money if you purchase his skies. He did give me the skies for free, so I just wanna let you know that all that information up front. Now, as far as getting his skies or any third-party set of skies into Luminar AI, what you need to do is go to the sky filter itself and click on this top area where it says sky selection. At the very top of that is a drop down. Click on that and then click on show custom skies. There a finder window will open up if you have a Mac or a file explorer window will open up if you have a PC and it will show the folder where you need to put the custom skies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize Luminar and on my desktop, I have a full set of his skies. There's a master folder with all the subfolders of his skies there. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to drag that right into this folder and move it in there. So now it's in this custom folder. And I could close down that finder window and I could go back to Luminar AI. Now, when I go down to this drop down, you'll see that it's defaults tall skies. But if you go down to custom, these are Rob skies now. So those are all the skies that I just put in that folder. So I could pick one and what you want to do is try to match the lighting that is in the scene. Meaning I'll just grab a sky and just click on one and let it load. And this, uh, when I took this shot, the sky or the light or the sun <laughs> was to my back, as you could see by the statues being lit directly on the back of the, his or the back of the statue. So this um, sky looks like it would fit. So I could just go through and try to find similar skies or something I think will fit. Let's just go with this one for the sake of argument. And then we'll start looking down at these other tools that are down here. Uh, first of all, they're separated into five different groups, orientation, mask refinement, scene relighting, reflection, and sky adjustments. Uh, I recommend you start at the top and work your way down. The first thing you really want to make sure is that it's blending with the horizon. And when I first ever tried to replace the sky on this image, I got fooled. Because if you look down here at the lower left-hand side, I'll zoom in a little bit. It looks like the sky isn't blending very well. But if I turn off this filter so that the sky is back to the replacement sky, you can see that's just atmospheric haze on the hills off in the distance. So it really has nothing to do with the sky itself that I just replaced. That is inherent in my original image. So uh, be aware of that because I was fiddling around for quite a long time trying to blend the sky at the horizon until I actually realized that that was haze out there in the distance. But this is what this horizontal blending will help you do. And what it really does, it kind of will fade away the sky towards the bottom horizon or it will make it come in stronger as you can see there. In this case here, because there is that atmospheric haze off in the distance, 
I think if I move it more to the right, it blends better. It looks a little more natural. Now vertical offset, you could move the entire sky up or down. And so I'll just move it down applicably. And then the horizontal offset is kind of moving it left and right. It's kind of a pivot in a way. It kind of seems to me to when you're in the middle, the sky's as far away as possible. When you move it to the right, it shifts the sky to the right, but kind of zooms in a little bit, you see? And the same thing if I go to left, it shifts the sky to left and kind of zooms in a little bit. In this case here, I think right in the middle or around the middle is fine. Uh, orientation, if your horizon line is crooked for whatever reason and you want to, you know, or your sky is crooked, you could fix that there. You also could flip the sky. This is just a horizontal uh, mirror image of the sky. So you could flip it left to right like that if you like to do that. So that's the orientation of the sky. Below that we have mask refinement. Now this has to do with where it blends a little bit on the horizon line, but also whenever anything in the foreground and midground is popping up into that sky, how it is masked around that object. For example, we have the statue uh, popping up into the sky. And as, let's say I move global to the right, you could see how, it, if I move it to left actually, you could see how the mask isn't set right. You could see there's this huge halo going around the statue. So you're going to use this if by default it doesn't look like it's blending well around anything popping up into the sky. Move this slider. This also affects the horizon line as well. So you could see how it's affecting the horizon over in here as I move it. So you're just going to want to move that till you get it to fit uh, well. Close gaps again is, you know, very similar. It's going to be around the horizon and around any object popping up into the sky. So if I move it to the extreme right, you can see how it's kind of not closing the gap basically around the statue and down at the horizon area as well. Fixed details is really a fine adjustment. So if you just have a tiny little bit, if there was something that just wasn't blending right around his fingers, Try moving like fixed details, and that should take care of that. Now, scene relighting is often we're replacing the sky, and it may be too cool or too warm for the actual image itself. Also, the lighting just might not be quite right. So what you want to do here is with relight strength is when you move this, it's just going to affect the light on the original image. It's going to, if I move it to the right, make it a little darker, and if I move it to the left, a little brighter. So it'll call, help blend or make it look more natural. Relight saturation. This is, again, if maybe your sky is more saturated than the original image or vice versa, you move this slider to help just make it look like it's more natural. Now, relight human is if you have a person in the shot, uh, sometimes when you replace a sky, the lighting of the sky doesn't match the lighting on the face or the body of the human and if you move this this will help that and you can see it actually is affecting the back of the statue it it's interpreting this statue as a human so it is affecting that you can see if i move it right it's making it a little darker and it looks a little warmer when i move it to the right and when i move it to the left it's making it brighter and a little cooler so that could help you with that now reflection i'm going to show you on a different image this is when you have water in the scene and you want that sky to reflect in the water so you'll use that and then finally sky adjustments this is where we really kind of sell it all right so sky in this image right now it looks okay but you can see off in the distance these hills aren't in perfect focus and our sky is really in very good focus so we just want to blur it just a little bit um, if you need to add grain to match the uh, the original image you could add grain here atmospheric haze i have that haze off in the distance so i could add a bit of haze into the sky you can see if i move it right it, you add a lot of haze so you just want to add a little maybe to sell it this defocus amount i've noticed is kind of touchy that's at one that's at zero that's at 11. there's like it's from zero to one there's a big change and then from one to 15 there's it's a smaller change so defocus i think is something that skylum this slider itself is something skylum needs to look at again 
Uh, you could see that it's not acting linear. And, but at the moment, I put it back at one, and it looks different than it looked at one a second ago. So that's something that I think they need to work on there. This is warmth I mentioned before. Um, when you're doing scene relighting, sometimes the sky might be a little cooler than the, uh, than the rest of the image or vice versa. And this is here where you can move it and make it warmer or make it cooler. If it's just affecting the sky. So that could help you, again, better sell the uh the sky replacement and brightness uh this is in, like we're seeing relighting affected the original image brightness affects just the sky so you could see that so you really have total control over all areas and parts of the image with that uh, sky adjustment now let's jump over uh to an image here that has a reflection in it and even though there's clouds in the sky here um, I could replace the sky that sky with a different sky and have it reflect in the water now on this image here um, all I did did I do anything to it no I didn't even adjust this here let's just do some AI enhanced to this all right just to dress it up a little bit I didn't do any adjusting at all uh, so we'll go to the sky and again I'm going to pick a one of Rob skies um, as I recall, the sun was like over here on the far left. You can see how these are kind of bright over here. So I want to kind of find an, a sky that is similar to that. Uh, basically, the, it has to have light or it should have light coming in from the left. Um, and Or the right because I could flip the sky horizontally so we could remember that. So I'll just try a few. I probably should have, have tested this ahead of time. See, this has the sun here. doesn't necessarily match the original image. It's kind of interesting. So a lot of unique skies in this pack. That's why I, I liked it. Um, let's see. Okay, I kind of like this one. So you can see the reflection that it added in the water there. Here, I'm going to turn this off, and you can look at the reflection. And there's without the, ref the sky at all. And there you go with the reflection. Now, mainly you could do the same exact things. Start out with orientation. And, you know, you want to look at the blending at the horizon line there and get that to blend better. The vertical offset, you can move it up or down. In this case, we'll move it down a little bit. The horizontal offset, this is kind of like that pivot again, you know. You can see how the reflection is moving with it. And orientation flip, I don't need to do. But I'm going to jump down to the reflection. We only have one slider here. This is really just the intensity of the re reflection itself. If I move it to the right, it's more noticeable. If I move it to the left, it's less noticeable. One thing that I wasn't really aware of because I never really paid that much attention, and someone actually emailed me and told me this because I had mentioned in a video uh, before that the reflection won't be as saturated as the actual sky and that's actually not true in many instances in most instances the reflection will be more saturated than the sky unfortunately this slider doesn't really affect saturation as much as it just does like the opacity of the reflection but when you do turn the opacity of the reflection up it does affect the saturation slightly so hopefully in the future they add a saturation slider here uh, because in most instances, you're going to find that the reflection is going to be more saturated than the sky. So that's uh, something to be aware of. Um, what you could do is do a local adjustment with a brush and add saturation to, let's say, the water in the meantime until hopefully they update that. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the sky replacement filter that's in Luminar AI. In my opinion, they did improve it quite a bit, and they actually simplified it a little bit, the way they have it laid out now, I think does help a lot. And um, the sliders themselves are, um, work more consistently. I do think they need a little work on the defocus um, slider, because it seems to go from zero to 60 in, you know, in a couple seconds, and then it's real gradual after that. So they need, I think, to work on that. And I'd like to see them add a saturation slider in the reflection part 
of this um, of this tool. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Rob Del Vecchio for giving me his skies to try out. I really do like them. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have links to his website. You could check them out for yourself. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>